The South Pole Inn was the appropriate home Tom Crean built for himself after he'd been on three polar expeditions to the Antarctic. Born in Anaskal in July of 1877, Tom Crean's first polar contact was his application when volunteers were sought by Robert Scott in 1901 for the first Antarctic expedition. Accepted, he sailed on the vessel Discovery with a party of 38, departing England in 1901 and returning in July three years later. His daughters Mary and Eileen recall their father, a man who was very shy of publicity despite his tremendous achievements. And that probably accounts largely for the lack of national knowledge about the man. In fact, as they said, he'd have avoided any acknowledgement of his feats. It is a very memorable day for us. Uh, this plaque will ensure that my dad's name will never be forgotten. Well, all I remember he telling me was that when he came back after the first expedition, he was very dark and he came home back home snow white. The only thing I can remember he showing us, we put our hands up into his ears and they were like a board. And he said that was a result of frostbite. Speaking on behalf of my sister and myself, we are deeply moved and truly grateful to each and everyone who worked so hard and co contributed so much to the events of this day. You will agree that the honor is overdue. That it could happen in our lifetime makes it even more memorable. The plaque today on the walls of his South Pole Inn will most certainly ensure that his name will not be forgotten. During the Discovery Expedition, Crean was frequently assigned to sledge teams, the sole method of transport across the polar ice cap. Twice he survived falls through the ice, being noted as a man able to keep his head in difficult conditions. The Kerryman was one of the few Discovery veterans chosen for Scott's second expedition in the Terra Nova, where he achieved great prominence, at one stage performing heroic feats in jumping from one ice floe to another while surrounded by killer whales in order to bring assistance to comrades. A clear picture emerges of, of, of Tom Crean as a man of very great personality, of great courage, of great resolution and fortitude, but illumined perhaps by a saving grace of humour. I could illustrate that by an event that occurred on, on Christmas Day 1911 when the party set off for the pole and Tom was sledging with Bowers, Teddy Evans and Lashley. And Lashley fell into this deep, deep crevasse and he was hooked onto Tom and Tom was bowled over and knocked flat on the ground. And Lashley's life depended on the fact that Tom was caught by the sledge. And after a great deal of, after a great deal of effort, uh, Lashley was rescued from the crevasse. As he came out, it was his birthday. And as he came up from the crevasse, Tom leaned over and said, Happy birthday, Bill. <laughs> While Scott and his party reached the pole on January the 17th, 1912, but perished on the return trek, Crean was assigned to the relief party, which discovered Scott's body, retrieved his diary, and buried him and the party. In 1914, Crean travelled to the Antarctic for the third time, on this occasion on the Endurance, under the leadership of Sir Ernest Shackleton. Decorated for his efforts, Crean's letter home describing his efforts was typically modest. We had a hot time of it, he wrote, the last 12 months. The boss, referring to Shackleton, is a splendid gentleman, and I done my duty towards him to the last. That was Crean's final trip to the Antarctic. He married Ellen Herlihy of Kirkagwina and they settled in Anaskol, Crean's birthplace, opening the South Pole Inn. He was remarkable when it came to the practical virtues, the development of uh, the sledging technique, the adaption to an environment which was virtually unknown at the time. His crossing of South Georgia with uh, Crone, uh, Shackleton, Crone and Worsley in 1916 to effect the rescue of an expedition which survived under really serious consequences was something quite amazing. Tom Crean and uh, the South Pole Inn at the end of it is very well known in South Georgia in the Antarctic. 
I gather the knowledge will be spreading a little here soon too, <laughs> with the best of luck. During so it was that Kerry County Library and the Lago Company tenants joined together to stage the commemoration, which involved an exhibition now on display at Dingle Library, detailing the career of one of Ireland's most famous explorers.